Hey everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your archer. And today we're going to be painting a tree that exists across four seasons. I'm going to show you how to create this in acrylic paint on canvas, step by step. And I'm going to try to simplify the explanation. So if you're a total beginner, you're going to be able to understand the layers and how we are going to be covering this. I would say this is a two hoop painting. But again, I'm going to really try to focus down in explaining each technique, each acrylic process so that you can get your spring, summer, winter, fall, all of that in. Did I just say that order? In a beautiful way. <laughs> on the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He, uh, you know, keeps me on track and focused and follows me with all of our cameras. We have many cameras on the show. He also makes sure you guys have the picture in picture and answer stuff in the comments. Make sure that you guys can ask me questions. There's a lot of important stuff that's crazy back there that we can't see. We actually have a shield between the two of us. We don't see each other so that often is interesting and weird but it gives you a nice let background. me out let me out <laughs> this is live but if you're here on the replay it's not <laughs> <laughs> if you check out the description below um i like to hide the materials there and other information that will help you complete this painting if you're here for the live john will have some special instructions for you for after the show and if you're here for the replay definitely check out that link there's going to be some cool extras there that start populating over the next 24. And you guys are gonna love them. All right, I think I'm ready to jump on in. Oh, I, I'm Good ready day. if you're ready. I'm ready. All right. And of course, let's, as always, this, this is May, so we're doing Play Live. May. Right, so in May, May we are supporting Play Live, which is a uh, influencer, gamer, YouTube thing, Twitch thing, where creators like myself support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital with awareness and fundraising and all of that. And actually that's where the design of this painting came from, was from the actual hospital when I took the tour. Not the tree itself, the idea. Okay, <laughs> all right. I have an 11 by 14 canvas board here. And on my canvas board today, I have a few wishes. I got these off the YouTube channel. Today I got, I got a wish for Barbara that she has healing around her liver. Um, a relief from pain and, and, and stress for Christine, more healing relief and strength for uh, Leslie, and then um, strength through loss for Marilyn. So those are our wishes today. And of course, we wish that St. Jude kill, cures all the diseases, well, kills is good too, rids the earth of all the diseases they're currently researching right now. And I'm excited we're gonna be able to support them over here at the materials thing. I have out uh, the first paint that I'm gonna start with, which is my phthalo blue and my titanium white. And in the center, I have this product. This is gloss glazing liquid by Golden Paint Colors. Um, you can get this a lot of places. What this essentially is, if you don't have this product, is a slow drying extender. So what they mean is, there's a product called a retarder. And what that does is that slows the drying of the paint, but you can't use it as an extender. Right? You don't want to put a little bit in it, a little bit of paint in it, and then try to paint with it because it won't dry. Um, so the reason this is an extender is, is that you don't have that limitation. So whatever product you're looking for, you're not just looking for a retard or you're looking for a slow drying extender. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of products out there like that, but those are the key words that you're searching for. I highly recommend this one. It's not sponsored. It's just I highly recommend it. I gave a bottle to my mom. <laughs> and you're sipping on your breakfast. I got her hooked. I've got everybody. And I'm sipping my breakfast because, you know, breakfast, self-care, right? So on this canvas, right, <laughs> I'm going to show you how to get this in and I'm going to freehand this in and explain it. There is a traceable. I'm going to do that right after because whenever I do trees, and this is funny and, I, and I'll show you guys sometime. Every time I do the tree, it's a, a little different. I don't know. I have to grow a different tree in my brain every time I grow it. So... On this, I'm going to take this first and divide it in half. I'm going to use my handy dandy. See, now I notebook. No, I'm not, I'm not Blue's Clues. Um, and I'm going to make a little line at the seven inch mark, which is almost the 18 centimeter mark. It's just a little bit before that. And I'm going to divide my canvas at first into half. Although I would hang out with Joe. You would, I would, yeah, totally. Actually, anybody on that. I think Blues is pretty cool. I mean, like, pretty cool. I, I like Twix, but you know, Joe seems like a kind of guy to hang out with. <laughs> so I made a nice little line here. I'm using a watercolor pencil because I can mist it and blend it into the canvas, and it won't bleed up through my paint. 
you could use kid's chalk or something else, or you could just mentally in your mind divide it in half. I just want to illustrate that for you. On this side, I'm going to be painting kind of my spring summer sky, and I'm going to be putting that more in a daytime mode. And then on this side, I'm going to be doing my fall winter sky, and that's going to be a little bit more in a nighttime mode. So we also have a bit of the day night tree, which I like to do because they make me happy. And I'm going to begin this project by misting my canvas, if I can find my mister where I put it. It's mystifying right you. Uh-oh, it needs a refill. I'm going to, I guess, pour off some water from my little jug into this. Or I could just go. Oh, you could just go <laughs> fill it up. That's right. When I run out, you could, when I, once I've missed it, you just go fill it up. So here's what I'm doing. I'm going to miss my canvas a little bit, right? And then I'm going to paint some white paint on it. And what I'm finding is, is this is going to help you with the blend. Because you guys, it's hard to blend when you're new. It's hard to, to get that effect going. So that's why I'm doing this. Your tricks that you don't want to do, you want to over wet the canvas. That's not going to help you. You don't want drips in your acrylic paint because that means you're underbinding it. You do, however, want the product to flow smoothly over the canvas. Oh, it's like handing me things. And I guess I'll just grab this right here. This is a number 26. Okay. This is a number. Where, where do they see me? Oh, you're not here. I don't know. It's like, why do I think the thing is wet? Like wired into your brain? I'm going to crack. So right here. There you go. Woohoo! This is a number 26 bright. This is a ruby satin. It's short handled. I'm going to get this brush in water, drag off the extra, and I'm going to load up with the white. Can you guys see how I'm loading? I'm mm -hmm. pulling out into the brush. This is putting the paint into my bristles and helping me quite a lot. And I'm going to take this and just go right into the canvas here. And I know where my halfway point is. It's okay if I go over a little bit because there's a big giant tree in the middle of my canvas. So you will not be hurt by it. The interesting first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come and get just a little bit of the blue on my brush, grabbing my glazing extender. I'll pull this in, pulling it in. Yay. And see, this is a very light color because in the spring and summer, we have these beautiful light bright skies, don't we? Yeah. Now notice I'm just going back and forth. The canvas being primed with that little bit of paint and moisture is allowing me to do a very soft wet into wet blending. See how that's working? Yeah. And I don't need that much pigment and I'm getting a lot of success here with this process. Now to get the effect and I'm just smoothing it out. And what, how I'm doing that is like I'm going over the top very quickly, but just on the tip of my bristles. So let me slow down so you can see that effect over the top. Not quickly now because I'm demoing it, but I go over very quickly and softly with the bristles. And I'm going to want to darken as I go up here. So loading the glazing medium into my brush and a lot more of the blue, little white. I'm going to come down from the top. And pull this darker color into the ombre of the sky that I'm building here. Can you guys see how I did that? I see your ombre. Do you see my ombre? And I raise you a fade. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I love it. 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 All right. So here we are. That's our first little layer of that. And so what you should have is a sky that's going darker from the top and getting lighter as it comes down. I find it can take about two layers to really perfect this look sometimes. And so don't feel weird if it is for you. Your goal is to try to make sure that you're covering the canvas easily and that your products are working for you in the way that you want. That's your only goal. And to have fun. Your only goal? I'm going to rinse out a little bit so I can begin again like you do. And this time I'm going to go a different little direction. I'm going to load up the glazing medium into my brush. This just slows the drying time down of the paint and lets me extend it. That means the paint goes further. And I'm going to make sure I have a nice amount of blue on there, a smidge of white because we don't want it to be a night sky. We want it to be more of a bright summer day sky. And I can go right over the top again, kind of improving. 
the depth of the color in the fade. See how I'm doing? Yeah. I'm going to just softly brush this so that it's very soft. I want a soft sky. And I can do that in acrylic. Now, I'm going to get a little more glaze on my brush and a lot more white paint. Now, what blue are you using there? Phthalo blue. Phthalo blue. Oh, did I not say that? Oh, my gosh, sweetie. I'm not Thank sure. you for catching that. I'm, I'm not sure. I thought I did, but if I didn't, I apologize. Phthalo so, blue. Let's go recap what you got over there. So I have titanium white, phthalo blue, and golden glazing liquid. Okay. I'm just getting more white as I go down, if you guys can see, and glazing liquid. And this is going to let me have this really beautiful sky that I can begin to work with as I go. Just getting the color off. Get a little more white. And right here towards the bottom, I'm going to really make sure that that's quite light. Quite light coming up. You need to wipe off your brush like I do. Go ahead and do that. What I had was too much blue on there. Here I am loading again. See, I'm flipping and loading. This is working because my paint is still wet. That's how I'm getting this to do its little blend thing. So now this is going to give us some nice zones on this side of our tree. We have the darker, brighter summer. We're coming down into that spring fade, and that's how we're going to get that. Which I think is pretty fun. And I'm rinsing out because I'm going to do a weird thing. I'm going to sip a little coffee before I do it. How are you guys doing today? Really good. Good. Okay, good. That's really good. So Kara was asking, what do you like to paint most of the time in your private time? Well, now this is what I'm doing all the time. I'm designing for future lessons. I'm experimenting with ideas. Um... I am 724, creating lessons and projects that I think will help you get excited about art. Um, before that, I, I, I think I did what a lot of artists did. I, I had a little collection that I had together. Last was these swimming horses. And, you know, you go enter them in shows and you do that whole thing. It's really kind of fun. Yeah. So I, what I would they say would is not be practical to teach on this. Plus, it's like my total fun art. I can't be teaching that. That would be crazy. If, if my observation of cinnamon is that she still follows her artistic fancies yeah. and you know <laughs> goes from topic to topic, we just now have a practice of recording it on video for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm thinking about that lesson experience, right? Yeah. Yeah, and for sure. I would say the BAQ right now probably has the most going on of what I might normally do in my free time. Oh yeah, all the girls and the different um yeah. Those are pretty cool. Your your fantasy girls. I love that. Now, I'm going to add, not Doc's Purple, I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to this. You're going to mix those blues up? I'm going to mix them up as I ombre over into the other sky. I'm going to take a little bit of this thalo that I have here. Thalo, thalo, thalo. And I'm going to get a little Prussian, Prussian, Prussian. And so that, there's sort of this little half step between these two fields. I've gotten this a little bit moist moist i'm gonna come here just about where the halfway mark was blending this out now my night sky actually does take a couple of coats you can kind of seam this here lightly you just don't want to go past where the tree is going to cover your seam so you can seam a little bit seam it I don't know that I've, I've seen you use those two blues like that on a background together. No, I have not done that yet on the show. And I was really excited to show this type of technique, this type of process of how you can get these two kind of skies together. I actually get asked that a lot. It's like having both Joe and Steve on Blue's Clues. It is like having both. See how I'm seeming between these two fields here? I am putting this out and I'm creating this space that is letting them both exist. I'm going to pull out a little more of my phthalo, but my pressure, of course, is into it, and I'm adding my glazing medium as I'm coming down because a little bit of this corner, right, that's fall, and fall's a little more aqua than the winter is. If you painted with me for a while, you know I move into my uh, uh, Prussian blue come winter. 
You want to do any of the winter painting with me, run out and find a tube of that somewhere. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> that will be the, the Russian, the, the, the Prussian blue, not the Russian blue, Prussian blue will be the color. Now I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get a little of my Prussian blue loaded more aggressively on my brush, pulling it through my glaze and my white. Because I got to make a little snowstorm down here. And I'm going to come from the right hand side, brushing towards the left. And blend these little fields of reality together a bit. So isn't this fun how this like this soft brushing, like just, you know, you just blend it. I love it. All right. So I have this first coat on. For the night sky, I'm going to definitely, definitely need to let it dry and do a couple coats over it to deepen it. I don't want to use black. Not that there's anything wrong with using black. It's a great color, and every artist should have some in their art box. But because for this, I want it to be like a blue I'm falling into with my eyes. Do you want to fall into your blue with your eyes? I do. So that's mm. why I'm going to do that. While I'm drying the canvas with my hair dryer, John can talk to you about our header bar. Oh, my goodness. We are creeping towards me showing my sketchbook on air. Ooh, scary benchmark. Pretty in. Pre- I'm looking forward to it. So. I know John is. All right. I'm going to hair dry, babe. You give okay. him a talk. So while she's doing that, I'm going to say all this month, we are, we are, t- we are working together um, a- as part of an activity called Play Live. And Play Live is where a bunch of video gamers get together and all month uh, focus on trying to raise money for St. Jude. And some video game friends of ours asked us to come do this, uh, and, and, and that was Trade Chat. And she has, she's a fellow YouTuber, and she has a, her team is called Derp Squad. So we joined her team called Derp Squad to help raise money. And what that means is that we together as a team are all trying to raise a really big sum of money. And so we put that goal out there for all of us to try to team up and try to do this really good work uh, of, of coming out and letting all of you guys know how great St. Jude is so we can help raise some money to, to help fight all of these childhood illnesses. And so as you guys probably know from watching us by now that St. Jude is, is one of the most fantastic hospitals out there. They fight all of the child, their, their mission is to take on the toughest childhood diseases and make them obsolete. And they, uh, they do that without ever having to charge a family or, or anyone for any of the work that they do. And all of the research that they do becomes open source. That means that they share it with all the other doctors in the world. So every time you give a donation to them, it's just like you're supporting all the doctors all over the world. Yeah, and they're, they're actually trying to expand their treatment centers into different parts of the world that for uh, political reasons, geographic reasons, can't get to St. Jude to help do studies on these illnesses and to treat these illnesses for these families. So it's kind of amazing. Yeah. I, I can't even, I just like, it's so, it's so ambitious and it's so beautiful and it's been working so long. Uh, look at this. She painted herself. I did. So all all this Let month we're supporting. Let me clean myself up. I got to see where my contaminant is. So all this month we're going to be supporting St. Jude, helping to raise funds. And as you can see, that the the little marker at the top of the screen, while Cinnamon is entertainedly cleaning her arm. Oh, I mean it's going to get weird. And so uh, we've got benchmarks that you can see. Uh, <sighs> I'm, I'm, I got some. So, like my, look at that. Well, it's because it's right here, and I can't get it That's off. That's crazy. I see wet wipes. Wait. Wait. Wet wipe. Wait. Where'd you go? I have wet wipes because okay. I was doing palette knife stuff. Sorry, guys. I am such a hot mess today. But that's okay. Some days are hot mess days, aren't they? Uh, look at that. Wet wipes. Are, oh, if you didn't know this, wet wipes really clean up acrylic very well. <laughs> In huh. case you didn't know. Maybe you didn't have kids and you didn't know wet wipes remove everything. Wow. Yeah, babies, you kind of figured that out by now, the power of a wet wipe. But if you didn't yet, or it's been a while, these things are powerful and they're pretty non-toxic because, you know, for babies behind. Well, you know what's awesome, Cinnamon, is one of our community members here, Little Stars, just said that 
uh, St. Jude's did her open heart surgery when she was less than a year old. So isn't that awesome? That is so awesome. We're blessed to have you as part of our community, and we thank St. Jude's for making that possible. So thank you, St. Jude's. Thank you, Little Stars, for being here in our community. Big art hugs. And thank you guys for helping us pass along this good work. It is just spectacular and i'm so very grateful for everything that you guys bring into our world and share with us to that end to that um end. and it was it was star little star little star i i don't know if little star will remember this but at saint jude children's hospital in the hallways as you're traveling through the different treatment centers they have them decorated for the seasons so you're in the fall hallway the spring hallway the summer hallway or the winter hallway and when i was trying to think of designs that i wanted to do uh, when we were raising awareness for this, that really had stuck with me, like visually, super deeply. So this tree is kind of about that. It's like a, it's like a little painting that describes that whole journey. So one of the tips that I would like highly suggest here is to take a little bit of chalk, and I'm going to lower my ground. I've done this painting a bunch of times, uh, getting ready. You guys have the first iteration of it in your thumbnail. And your picture in picture, but I've actually done it several times just trying to figure out the different ways I could accomplish showing you guys how to paint this. So make sure your ground is about at least a quarter of an inch up from the bottom of the canvas. I don't want it to end right in the corners, but I want it to be a little shallower than I first uh, made it so we can have more fun playing with the sky. So this sort of lets me know where my ground's gonna be. I'm gonna put out my Burt Sienna like you do and a little smidge of my green and with these three colors I'll lay in the underpainting of the ground you don't have to be precious with the underpainting of the ground simply because you know oh let's get a cat's tongue I love my cat's tongue so this is a number four cat's tongue in in my art sherpa line it is got a nice point on it synthetic I really enjoy it and the first color I'm going to get is I'm going to get my burnt Sienna and my Prussian blue and I'm going to paint in my little winter corner and if you need to get some glazing medium to improve the flow go and do that paint right over this little chalk chalk does not want to be painted but that's okay I paint over it and painted I'm making this huh paint the chalk paint the chalk I'm making this little cool area and then as I'm coming forward I'm going to go right into my brown because now we're into fall and I'm just sort of laying the groundwork for what I'm going to be doing you could have done this all black if you wanted to, but honestly, the little transitions are mentally helpful. And it's great to have an underpainting that's in the tone of the colors you're going to be using on top. As I'm going forward, I'm going to get right into the green. And I'm going to do all the rest of this with this green over here on the summer spring side. Blending the fall and summer together. See how we're doing? I do. This is just a great way to start this i think i love these four season images so much expect to see more of them john's been seeing all these crazy designs i like them it i think that life is is nothing but transitions and journeys and this imagery is a good way to talk about that so here we go i've got my little my little hill it's all blended that's really all i need for that now i've got my little night sky here and in my night sky, I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to take my white and I'm going to just sketch out so you know where we're going. I'm going to have a little moon. Don't sketch this out. I'm just showing you. I'm going to have a little moon right here. And then I'm going to also have coming off of this a little swirl, kind of a Van Gogh style swirl. It's actually the snow flurry coming in. So that's where it is. And you want to just make sure that you've got good positioning because, you know, you've got your little tree that comes up here, right? So I need to, within my tree and my clouds and all of that, just be aware that I have to have space for those things and that I'm going to want to do my brush strokes and my tonalities to support those objects. Because even though it's wind and that's something you can't see, we've done it visually, so you kind of can't. We've said it's carrying so much snow that you can see it, right, essentially. So I'm going to put my four cats on the side. I'm going to be using it a lot today. So... Definitely keep it close by. I'm feeling like I'm going to go into one of my Cambridges. Now, 
this Cambridge is a bright. It's a number eight. But what I like about it is it's a mix of synthetic and bristle, hog bristles. And that lets you get all the wonderful texture of hog bristles without it becoming a soft, mushy mess. I'm going to take a little of my Thalo Blue and my Prussian Blue together, as you would, and a little of my glazing medium. Glaze, 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 glaze. And I'm going to come here at the top of this. And you can see because I have the glaze in it, I can even kind of soften this little edge with these little bristles. See how soft, soft, soft. So it, it, it's definitely impacted, but it's going to come out of the tree pretty softly. And I'll go ahead and kind of paint around my moon that I know I'm putting in. Because what I'm doing is I'm deepening the sky. I'm improving the depth. These are transparent paints. A little more Prussian blue as I'm coming out here. These are very transparent paints. But when you layer them, they give you such a good effect. And I'm just brushing that back and forth. Woo, woo, woo. Now this is the mix up here of the Prussian and the Thalo. But as I'm going to come down, I'm actually going to start moving a little bit more into just the Prussian to let that tonality sort of work for me. Get, I'm going to get some glazing medium on my brush here. And using the glaze, this is the second way I can blend this area out. You guys see how it's blending? Yeah. I'm just pulling it across. Aren't I? I'm just pulling across. There's my brush. You can see there's glaze in it. There's pigment in it. It's a hot mess. But when they work together, the tips of the bristles on the canvas, you can get a blend even once your paint is dry, which is pretty extraordinary. I'm going to go ahead and offload all of this right over here. Right, because a nice little bunch of paint right there. There we go. And then as I'm coming down, I'm going to get just my Prussian. Look, it's just my Prussian. I'm coming in over here with my dark, dark Prussian blue. Oh, sweepy, sweepy sky. Right. So to the right side of the canvas, it's definitely, definitely going to have more Prussian to it. Loading my brush with more glazing medium and Prussian, I'm also going to grab a little white. Yeah, I've got that all mixed up. And as I'm coming down, look at this blend. I'm going to start talking about my snow flurry now. And yes, I am painting out my swirl. The reason is, is that was there just for me to remember where I'm going to be doing this sort of sweeping, this sweeping motion with my brush stroke. Mm -hmm. And you guys see my sweeping motion? And I'm going to come in sort of at an angle now. Look at that. That's how I'm starting to talk about my snow flurry. You can get a little more white on your brush. Impression, a little more white and glazing medium. I'm going to continue to sweep this stroke in. Hopefully, is the cam catching it, John, Master John? I think so. I'm so glad. Can you guys see how the stroke is like implying that snow flurry? Yeah, for sure. And that's like important. And then I can, I can still kind of like curve it up where I know I'm going to have that space. But it's important to start implying that. Now, right here, I have still a little bit of the old style fall, so I'm going to come here and I'm going to do what's called offloading, which is just wipe off the paint from my brush. I'm going to get a little of my phthalo blue and some of my white. And of course our glaze. And I'm going to come through here and make sure that there's just a little corner of fall that's joining this blustery day. There we go. Something to know about this product, their products sometimes can have the same name in acrylic paint and do different things. That's why I always give you those keywords, those uh, performance words from the label so you understand what you're actually looking for. Because somebody might call a product a glaze, and that means it makes transparent coats and dries fast, which would not be the effect you might necessarily be looking for. I'm scumbling here trying to work the paint into my canvas. Scumble. See, that's when you go like this, when you wiggle. All right, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Now we're starting to look like a very night sky. But, guys, we've got to do one more coat. I know it's a lot, but we're going to go just into this upper corner. I got my brush wet, rinsed it off. What green is that there? Uh, which green? Thalo green. Okay. Burnt sienna, Prussian blue, Thalo blue, titanium white, golden 
Golden Paints Gloss Glazing Liquid. Okay. That is what we've got out right now. And a Cambridge number eight break. And there are links to these products in the description. So if you're looking for them or you need to see what the bottle looks like, um, that's something you can uh, absolutely take advantage of. Now, you're using a smaller brush than what a lot of uh, us would expect to use on this background. Is well, I'm working a bunch of areas that are in zones. So you're kind of you're using the smaller brush to create more brush stroke texture. Yes, so that I can start to define my zones in very distinct ways. So it feels like subtly, I've got this time of year, this time of year, this time of year. Oh. Pain is painting a lot. John has watched me like do this every which way I can do it, <laughs> just to make sure you guys get a good result that you know you're really really gonna like. So the next thing that I'm going to want to do is layer one of my stars. This is golden fluid. Okay, so in texture, in viscosity, this is a lot like craft paint. And if you can't get the golden fluid for this next effect, you can use craft paint. I feel like the golden fluid stars hold their white. The, the titanium white is so opaque and so pigmented. I don't ever have my stars sort of fade out on me. And you might get that sometimes with the craft paint is the reason why I bother with this. I'm going to come to this side. If you're worried that you're going to make a boo-boo, you can always cover your canvas with a towel or a, I can't cover it with that towel because that would just mess it up. <laughs> you need some, you need some masking. There oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm just making sure that my stars don't splatter where I don't want them to. This is my first layer of stars. I'm using my Art Sherpa splattering brush. This is a part of my galaxy set. When I get down to the snowy area, I can even be a little bit more aggressive with that because it's snow, right? Cool. Oh. There you go. There From can be stars very snowy. To snow. Now, the reason I did this at this time is that that's going to let me, I'll have one more little splatter to do once I get my little clouds in. But that way, as we're building things up, we're not splattering things that we don't want splattered. While this is all like this, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to fix this little boo-boo with my slightly damp brush, as it will. Put my shield back in the trash. <laughs> I'm going to come here and I'm going to talk about these little clouds that are right here. And to do that, I'm going to get a small amount of my titanium white and my Prussian together. So it's not a bright, bright white yet. I'm going to make sure that this is not an over damp brush. And I'm going to come right here. And with a very soft pressure, I'm going to make a very light, little distant kind of cloud bank that's maybe going on right about here. Like you would have, right? A distant little cloud bank. And then maybe I've got another little bit. I'll get a little more white into my brush. Another little one that's coming up here. You know that we can have doing all kinds of interesting things. Clouds have irregular shape. They, I know they make you guys crazy and you just wish there was like an on button. that said, boom, cloud, I'm done with it. Yeah. But what I'm trying to do is create shapes that seem random, like they're affected by nature and the weather. I'm going to brush this part of the cloud out a little bit. See how I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And go ahead and brush this down a little as well, like you might. Brushing that down. Well, I've got all that there. I can come in, sort of figure out where I'm going to put my little moon. And I'm going to just loosely sketch this little sucker in. Coming around the top of my cloud. Because I like that these clouds kind of layered over my moon. And the color on your canvas should be like not white. It should be a so like a soft blue gray white. Right? If you can't get the circle, you can always just complete it and then put your cloud back. It's uh, totally doable. 
So remember, this is acrylic paint and it layers really well. And you want to lean into those factors. I'm putting a lot more white on my brush. I'm getting a little Prussian. Because I've got to come down and maybe start talking about this swirl. I'm going to come down here. I'm on the tip of these bristle, bristles. And I'm going to just start brushing this down. And I'm going to make a little swirl. I'm going to go swirly swirl. It does swirly swirl. You got to just, you know, you're starting to get your swirls on. Get your swerves on. You know, you can always move it. If you're not happy with where it is, you absolutely can do that. And we'll put a little of our snow, snow bank back. We just, you know, we're making sure that we've got layers. I'm coming back with more white and I've got a very dry brush. My pressure's so light and I'm just softly brushing the shape. So see there's, I've got this the white's loaded on my brush and I'm just softly brushing, brushing, brushing the shape. And this is sort of a very illustrative um, little thing that I have here, this little wind factor, because, you know, we've given it in the same way that, obviously not with the skill Michelangelo had, but in that same thinking, we're representing the things that we don't necessarily see. I'm going to get a little of my full Prussian, glaze if I need it, and I'm going to come back and play with the tonalities that you might play with, right? Mm -hmm. Adding these dark values and some motion there that you might have. Some motion that you might be into. I'm going to go ahead and get a little of the phthalo on my brush and a little of the white again. And I might kind of brush out a few of these stars that are here up a little bit in the fall until they get up to this upper sky. So a little white, a little phthalo, and then brushing this kind of upward, 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 up, 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 up. And then I, I promise there's a break in a second if you guys are like painting along going, oh my gosh. We just want to work all this when it's a certain um, wetness. And so that's why I'm. Gives it that. Uh... Yeah. Distinct look. It can be breathy and painterly over here because the wind will be blowing and leaves will be going, but we just want to make it feel like this is transitioning into something else. It's a good time to rinse out. Um, I'm going to get a little of my phthalo and a smidge of my white. And I'm going to come here and maybe kind of talk about some distant and almost invisible weather. You see how I'm just like wiggling and I push oh, up yeah. and come down and then I, I wiggle and I, I'm just giving it just some variance that you might have. I'm going to get a little of my full brush in here and I'm going to brush back into these little clouds a bit. You know, so they have a deep darkness to you. Mm. Like you might have. And I may even come on this side of my moon. Making sure that this part of it is shadowed against the cloud. And I'm going to come back and put all my craters and things in. But this will let that cloud pop against that moon. So I've got to retain a little bit of this uh, space there that's darker. So we can really see it. And now I'm going to get a little more white on my brush. Just here on the edge of these. And what I'm going to tell you about clouds is clouds are made in the shading. So where's my light source? My light source is the moon. It's shining light or reflecting light technically down on the clouds. I need to find the parts of the clouds that would be highlighted. If I over highlight, the cloud can lose form. If I put too much contrast in, the cloud can lose form. So it's real important to be kind of chill about some of it because if, if you go overboard you end up losing all the work that you did i'm working just this corner of my my tool here and i can sit there and say maybe there's a little highlight right here and just the smallest little bit of something that could be happening and i'm barely touching the canvas right now to get this light effect 
Let's see how we're doing? Yeah. I'm going to wipe off the extra white. I'm going to get some strong white on the corner of my brush. And just create a couple little zones of updrafts in this cloud. Not too much, right? Those of you that did the Moonlit Mermaid with me, I mean, at the Bella Luna, you guys actually got to do a bunch of these clouds. All right? So, you know, it's just about keeping it together. Where I blended it, I feel like I lost some of my dark values, so I'm rinsing off my brush. I'm going to make sure that I come back. I put just a bit of pressure on there and just make sure that I don't lose what's making my clouds seem cloudy. That can happen to you. All right? Have you guys ever lost your cloud? Like, I had a cloud and then I got overexcited and then I lost my cloud. But there it is, coming back. And I like the bristliness of this brush to help me with these clouds. And what I'm trying to do is just get enough of a white value to tap onto the top here so we can really, really see what we've got. Let's see how that's going. I think that's pretty good there. Oh, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. If, if you guys liked Bella Luna, because everyone who did that did so good. That's a, the one of the mermaid leaping out of the water. Everyone did so good on her painting those clouds. I was really, really kind of excited to see that. All right, I'm going to bring now, this lighter color. Which brush are they were, they were just asking? Can you show that brush you're using there? What is that? Number eight, Cambridge Break. Okay. All right. And what I'm doing is I'm creating these sort of irregular moon kind of patterns here. Leaving this dark shadow so we can see our cloud. But that way that the moon feels like it's got craters and moon-like things. If you're a super astronomer, you can always make it some more white on my brush. You can always get the exact patterns that you're looking to create. And make sure your moon is accurate. That all the seas are represented as they should be. But me, I'm just making a little emotional moon here. And that's all it takes. It's very, it's very brushy, isn't it? Yeah. So this seems like a complicated sky, and there are complicated elements to it. But you can do anything in art if you break it down into its parts. Breaking it down into its parts. There we go. There we go. Here we go. And just making sure my little my little cloud is happity dappity. And if you need a little more, and I would recommend brushing just a little bit of the snowdrift back again using the galaxy brush. Just in that area. And the reason I like this brush for splatter is I can decide what direction it goes hmm. and be in control of it in areas that sometimes I wouldn't normally have control in that particular, with this particular tool I do, which is why I was like, you got to help me make this. Okay, let's sip our coffee and then we're going to do our spring summer sky. I know it's a lot. We're taking it in. This is pretty cool. It's kind of went deep on the sky there, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's like the sky is looking pretty good. So that, I mean, that's going to be where your tree is, right? Yeah. And uh, I like getting these elements in so I can decide where my branches go. So that <laughs> my favorite parts of the painting don't get lost. Um, and you can do it either way. You could put the tree in and then try to put those elements in and paint around it. Either way, you can't say like one is right or wrong. You say one is easier for you to process or not. <clears throat> oh, I should drink breakfast. Drink breakfast. There's some AM ASMR listening to me drink breakfast. Mm, mm, I don't know. That's a special experience for you. No, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'd have to turn it up to see if it if it uh, auto-cut it off. 
Oh, did it? We have a noise gate on here. Do you? I'm just putting a, I had little spots for my hand. I'm just going to put a little white over here to kind of blend them out. Yeah. This is all going to get lost in the clouds, but I just, the black spot can come through. So I, I try to make it so it doesn't pick up every sniff and yeah. <laughs> Now up here we have these sort of stratus clouds and these are some of my favorite to do. Um, they are some of the easiest clouds to do with the brushes that I call my cloud brushes. The cloud brushes, these are a dry brushing, scumbling brush. And what that means is like for heavy body paint, sometimes it's hard to find a brush that will give us a, a hard edge and be very good for dry brushing. This doesn't work good if the surface isn't dry. And it's important to work this brush on its angle. So the point of the brush, it just does a pirouette, but the angles are where all the action is. So be sure if you're using this, you know, use it on the angle. If you're using another brush for dry brushing, that's also okay. I can do this technique with a braid. I can do I can do it with all, almost my finger. But these do make it really easy. So what I'm trying to do is talk about distant, light little clouds that are flowing up like this. And so how I do this with my little brushes, I go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then I just take some of these long, see? So soft. Look at that. Is that not like magic how that puts those little stratas out there? You can you can even go look at this, you know, funny little cloud that happens. And it would, wouldn't it? And we see these in these high sort of days. Let me press harder, I get a nice little It can be so hard to do this kind of cloud for people, but this brush just rocks it out. And then I have it if I need to drop a hard edge on something. Or a wave or tree bark or anything where it just needs that sort of a scumble bum. A little more white. So if you get too much paint on this brush, it doesn't work great. And if you don't get enough paint on this brush, it doesn't work great. So it's okay to practice any technique that you're working on to see how it works for you. But hopefully what you get is some distant little wispy whispers. Did you get your wispy whispers? I think we did. All right, and they're just right over the sky. Now here's a really crazy new thing that I did, and I really thought it was a lot of fun. I've got to put out my quinacridone and maybe a little more white. This was a second cloud bank that I made. When I designed the first one, there were things I liked about it and things I didn't like about it. And so as I kept working on it, I was like, where could I move things? How would I change things? And I came up with this and I really, really loved it. And so I put out quinacridone magenta and some more titanium white. And I've got my glaze here. And at the moment, I'm going to put this out with the number 26. And then I'm going to be getting some of my fan brushes. There are a lot of fan brushes. But this is the Art Sherpa number four fan. I like the smaller one for this. And then I also have like um, a nice little Monza that will help me blend. So I've got a couple of these here and I'm going to show you another way to cloud. So I'm getting my brush right into this glaze and I'm going to come here and glaze right over this lower part of my canvas. Yeah, I'm doing that just directly on no pigment really other than what was in the little paint plop area. Right over. So that's going to help my canvas flow. That's going to be a little bit slick. All right, I've got that there. Now I'm going to take my number four fan and I'm going to get a little of my pink on here. Like you do. That brush looks so cool. Isn't it cool? And then I'm going to get some white and I'll work through it. See how you got? Tip, tip, tip in my little, my little glaze. And I want to make sure that this has got some fairly light. This should be super light, okay? So I'm going to come from here and I'm going to make a low bit of cloud banks. And watch how I do this because it's really fun. So I've got a little tree here. I know it's going to come out. And so I'm going to kind of round my little brush out here. I can use the corners to round it. And then maybe pull another little round up. There we go. I'm rounding that out. And then I'm going to come back this way. Go ahead and brush up. Brush, brush, brush up, right up into that first curve. 
These are so fun that go swirling and then down to put your cloud shapes into. And because I've got the glaze here, so much of my canvas is showing underneath, which is letting me get that little effect. Let's take this up so we don't have cloning. Did you know what we don't want? Cloning. Mm. And I'm just using the way the brush is, you know, inclined to want to curl to begin this. And then I can come very softly, blending, 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 blending these shapes in here. Now I've got the beginnings of this wonderful little low cloud bank with this sweeping updraft. And I can come and get a little white on here. Right, get my little white, and I can continue my sweeping up draft. Look at this. I go on the edge of these bristles. They're very stiff bristles to do that. Or yes, I mean, my my brush is a fibers. very unique cloud. It has very very stiff bristles. Or uh, filaments. Filaments. Yeah, stiff filaments because this is a synthetic brush. See, I'm just pushing this along at this upper edge here, and I'm gonna get a little more, and I load here on my corner, and I'm gonna push that along. Making these little spring clouds. With their little springy cloud shape. Low bank. Making different little interesting shapes. Here we go. And as my glaze is starting to dry, you know, some of the blending slows down, but actually I want that. And once I have this, and I'm gonna soften everything in here. What's nice about this is it softens these lines easily for me. I can come back and play my hard lines against my softer lines. And the other thing I can do is I can wiggle out these sort of, look at this, we're pressing in. Look at this little cloud that I can just pop in. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh. And that one just comes in. That one's not going to need any more work or thought or anything. It's just a little distant bit of pink that joining the little friends up here and it might just peek out from the tree right we're just like letting it peek out so we have this is now starting to take on this like fantasy space i'm going to rinse out i have to say the uh daytime went in a lot faster than the nighttime yeah nighttime was a lot of work daytime kind of comes in except for this little cloud bank which we're going to work i'm going to come from the left side and kind of work it back i'm going to bring my little brush in and let it Tell this little bank story. I'm brushing on this side of my brush, the paint. So I can offload on that side. Taking it right up to the tree. And I can always, as you can see, I can blend in that little cloud bank. Add a little more. I'm Now I've just loaded that corner of my brush. But what am I doing? I'm again looking for my light source. Getting a little more of my white in here. I'm looking for my light source and making sure that my cloud is lit from the light. And then I'm blending any of those spaces. Look at that. Just grab that and you hold on just a second there for me. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a quick adjustment here. Uh oh. So you take a little sippy sippy for a second? It yes. Take, it won't take but just a second. I'm gonna just make a quick adjustment. Okay. Hold on a second. But can you guys see that cloud coming out? It, like, it's crazy. It just pops out. And it's just a beautiful cloud. Okay. That's better. So sometimes I'll say you can paint anything with anything. You can paint anything with anything. It's the shape, the form, the value. Mm. Mm. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking for... Did you, did you get your adjustment? I got it all done. Okay. You're looking to highlight the parts of the clouds that are in the light. And let the rest of that cloud be sort of in the shadow. Light source is coming from up top. That's where you're going to put the light in. I'm grabbing paint on this side of my brush and just creating little, little areas of highlight using the kind of curve of it. And you can always just see softly blend. Underused brush the fan and certainly for acrylic artists, but a lot of that is because the uh, regular fans get all not fanny, they become fingers or something. Mm. I can actually show you with my other 
Oh, and yeah, I know what you mean. They clump up. They clump up. I'm like like a mascara You can see brush. mine isn't clumping. You're like, if you're wondering, like, why is yours not clumping? Because we made it that way. It's, it's like the mascara brushes that are too wimpy. And they, yeah. they clump up. Get a lot of familiarity with that, John. Yeah, clearly I do. But no, I watched a video. I saw it. <laughs> did you? Because you just, I just never had that opinion before. <laughs> oh, well, I saw a mascara brush and I was like, wow, they put a lot of technology in mascara brushes. And so okay. when I was doing research on fan brushes and other things, I ended up reading on mascara brushes. Because okay. they share a lot of similarities that you don't want to have things clump up on. Now I'm going to load just a bunch of this little white into my brush. And I'm going to just make sure the cloud has some of this little white blended in. Because uh, I'm going to have grass and stuff coming up here. You saying I wouldn't look good with smoky eyes? You know, I think you would look good with smoky eyes. You know I think that. It might match my beard. Yeah. My I'm glitter just beard. lightening this cloud and making sure that there's this wonderful, so fun cloud texture on this lighter forward cloud bank. See, I go pull, 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 pull. There, there we go. It's starting to pull in. And you can see that now as being lighter than the one behind it. I'm going to rinse out. And now I'm going to do something interesting. I'm going to dry it a little bit with my hair dryer and I'm going to finish it off that front cloud bank with a brush Ooh. to give it some hard edges and right. some defined details to pop it forward. So when you guys are uh, using your hair dryers at home, make sure you have it on the lowest heat setting. You're just trying to move some air over the surface of the can uh, of your palette, canvas, surface, whatever you're painting on. Uh, and that's largely because uh, acrylic is accelerated the curing uh, with air, not um, heat. So uh, if you just use uh, your hair dryer on the on the high air uh, on the on the on the high airflow, low heat, then you won't induce any um, shrinkage or discoloration that may happen uh, with lower quality paints. Now, of course, if you're using a, a pro paint, you probably won't have any of those problems, but it's always best practices to just use air because the heat doesn't genuinely help that much. So uh, other than that, I wanted to say thank you guys for coming and hanging out because we have a huge group of people. I always love seeing you guys in here. It's so wonderful to see everyone and hang out. Um, thank you for coming and supporting St. Jude. We, you know, it's charity that we love. We really love you guys coming and, and, and helping us with that. So there's Cinnamon. She's back. I'm with back. Her fly kind of. hair that everybody thinks is just super on fleek today. What? My what? Your hair. Oh, thank you. They were like, your hair looks so good. You got to tell her. And I'm like, I will after the next break. And then I forget because <laughs> we we're teaching. I'm going to take my number four break. From Cambridge, again, that's the synthetic and uh, bristles. I'm going to load up my white. Because this cloud down below is very, very light. But I need to give it some hard edges so that it seems more forward than the faded one. And to do that, I'm going to pick little areas. And I'm going to create little banks or zones of highlights that are directly catching the sun. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So I wiped off because I had a little too much pink in there. But again, that's what we're doing. We're going to come here and now, just a... show the tops of these little puffs, right? Like there's just this little guy and he's like off in the distance. But we're going to show the top of his little puff, huh? Now, uh, we had a question here. It was really good. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd love to answer a good question. No, I answer any questions. All questions are good. <laughs> so Mystic Ocean was saying, John, can you ask Cinnamon if you could use that fan brush on both clouds? The blue one in the dark side, too, is the one I'm assuming she's talking yes. about there. Yes, you could. You just were, you were into the moment of that other brush. So what this is, no, what this is, is sometimes um, if I intro a new technique into a painting and I don't show how to do it with a regular brush, it gives people anxiety. But by showing you all of these different ways to do clouds with these different brushes, what I'm really showing you, Kung Fu Panda, is that the cloud is in you. Oh, you're so tricky. So you're, you're saying it doesn't matter what brush I use. You can just make a cloud. Clouds have certain features in common, don't they? They have these irregular, crazy shapes. Right? They have form. They have value. They have perspective. And there's a lot of ways to get them in. And I love, love my cloud brushes. They scumble and they do that dry brush experience like, like nothing out there. And there literally is nothing out there that does it like that. So the cloud is not in the brush. It's in you. Right. Yeah. 
All right, Confucius but Sherpa. I highly recommend getting good brushes. And if you have my clouds, hopefully you guys are like, yes, I love them. They're so dry. I think that's pretty good. I like it. So you can see now I've created this cloud has a lot of what this one has going on, but it's got those hard edges from the brushes and we've got two layers of them. What? Is that not cool? It's a crazy cloud bank, isn't it? I'm going to keep this little scubbly brush for a second because I got to put a tree trunk in here. Now I can show you real quick, like when I was working on like the other day, I made it taller. I, I moved them around. So I'm happy with the composition. Right in the in the reference that John has, you can see the tree is shorter. So this is really about understanding your comp, like how I cut the tree through space, where I put the grass, all of that's going to matter. I'm going to start out by taking my um, brown and black to begin my cloud. That's not a cloud, that's a tree. And I'm also going to put out some yellow ochre and we're really going to bark it up. Bark it up. Bark it up. The real trick with the tree trunk is to paint enough of it to wrap the tree around it, but not so much of it that you're just painting over branches endlessly, which you would be. So I'm loading up my number four Cambridge with my an equal mix of my burnt sienna and my black. I'm going to come from the center here, and I'm just going to make a straight line up. Right. This is the basis of where my trunk is going to go. That's not a particularly anything line, is it? It's well, it's 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 the it's the trunk of a line. It's the trunk of a line. Once I have this, I know I can branch, <laughs> widen that base out to begin to talk about my trunk. And I'm widening it out. I wouldn't want to widen it out much past this, or the whole painting is going to be trunk. Trees get more tapered as they go up. Let me tell you about how wide that bottom is. And let's have that be your max. That is about two inches at its widest point. So let's try to keep it in that, okay? I'm going to get a little more of my black and brown. And I'm just brushing up. It takes a couple little layers to get this tree in. And bring my trunk up here. I'm just sort of widening it out, but it can't get wider than the base, can it? Yeah. Now, I am not going to take it much up past here at this width. And then there's some other stuff that I've got to think about on this. And I'm thinking I got to switch to my number four cat's tongue because I want a sharper line for this next bit. So I've got to put in a couple branches and structures of the tree now can't avoid it i'm dipping in my water and i'm loading up my brush you can see i pull and flip and pull and flip and i'm getting different black brown black brown that's how i get that mixed in there i know i have a very important structure of the tree that's going to come over towards the right hand side right i am adding fluid water to my paint and I'm mixing it through so it flows off my brush. I'm smoothing the edge of this tree. Now this particular branch I thought was very interesting because I wanted it to sort of break and come down. So I'm going to kind of break it and have it come down. And the reason I have that, and yes guys, I'm making a traceable from this. So when this is all done, you guys will have that if you're like, I am not ready to freehand this thing in. I'm going to take a little bit of this broken. See how I'm making this look like a little bit of broken wood? Like, have you ever seen how in winter trees, their branches get heavy and they break? That's what I'm trying to talk about here. And I'm taking this branch Ooh. now down below my swirl. And that's just going to help me keep my swirl looking good and my tree looking interesting. Like you might want. Let's just taper that. And then, hey, can even have a little, maybe it has a little friend coming off here. A little friend coming off here. A broken branch can have some little twiggly bits. We're putting snow on it anyway, so. There we go. 
thickening that up. We don't want to over thicken it, but we do want to show that it's there and that's happening. And that's going to actually help us get some of that weird twist in the trunk that I painted in. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you how I got that as I go. Now we have this bit of the, the tree that is definitely doing that. And I'm going to talk a little that another branch comes up off of it. I'm not going to take it up very far. I just need to show that that's there. And I'm improving the slope. I'm making that more believable. That's what I'm refining. Now there is a bit of the tree that's going to come up sort of vertically and vanish into the foliage up in here. I don't need to paint it that far, do I? It's going to be vanishing into the foliage. I don't want to paint all of it. And then it can have a little friend maybe coming off also in this direction that I can, you know, showcase or talk about. But there's a lot of just leaves, so I've got to be careful what I put in. Now, I have this wonderful top of my cloud, and I don't want to lose it. And I have to make a decision about the spring part of the tree and how I'm going to get that story told and express. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take a little tree branch out this way. And I have to decide if I'm going to bring another little structure of the tree over or something out or anything to drop the yellow foliage. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend here. I want to preserve that pink part of the cloud if I can. If I can't, I can't, but I'd like to. Had a good moment there, and I'd like to keep it. <laughs> so this right now is about all I'm going to want of that part of the tree. Right? I've kind of worked my way around some things. I know where they are. I know I've got to put in little branches and little structures, but I don't want to be painting them out and putting them back and painting them out and putting them back. To that start sounds like so much fun, though. <laughs> Let me get it's it like practice for little structures. Painting my them little in and putting them yellow back. ochre, and I'm going to grab this white I have sitting over here. <laughs> and I'm going to start the twist of this part of the structure of the tree. So I'm going to come up from the top of this branch. And pull this down. See how I'm doing? Oh, yeah. So now this is that part of the branch that's, that's becoming part of that rolled wood that I'm going to have. And then I've got another little bit of rolled wood here. Rolled wood, not dead wood. Although it is dead wood. So that's the white. I haven't rinsed off my brush. That's how I got there. So I had that black and that bird sienna. I put yellow ochre and white in it, and I haven't rinsed it out. And so then that pigment is still sort of depositing. And then I'm just sort of brushing this value here. I don't have to catch all of it. I just need to get enough of it that I can grow some grass before I refine my tree. So load, 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 load. Little white, little white. And there could be a bit coming off here from the side. Coming up into this part of the branch. And then up the middle of the tree, right here, we could start to twist this part of the bark. You see how we're getting that twisted bark look? I really like that in this tree, that twisted bark look. And that's like, there it is. That's that roadmap to my twisted bark. Roadmap your twisted bark. And I have to paint this little part of the tree fairly well so I can grow grass and blow sunflowers and I mean, not some flowers, um, dandelions and, and such things. So I'm going to take my black and I'm going to really shadow where I'm rolling the bark. I'm going to come under this branch. I'm going to put a nice strong shadow and definitely in my little tree branch and come down here. And like I'm going to do little branchy strokes. And by that, I mean like rough little, rough little strokes. Aren't those awesome? Yeah. And just do these rough little strokes to talk about certain parts of this. Ooh, let's deepen that crevice. We want to deepen that crevice. Branch, 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 branch. branch, branch. I really like painting trees. They speak to me. But this is not something you should tell them at the hospital. <laughs> 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 Things you don't want to say. Do you believe in like all this stuff? I'm like, yeah, I believe in unicorns and mermaids is not like a good intake question answer thing. <laughs> Uh, good times. 
<sighs> there we go. There we go. I'm going to just brush this out from the tree into the ground. And I have. I'm going to get a little of my yellow, just really load it onto my brush. Brushing from the ground up into the tree, this sort of dry brushed yellow. Can you guys see that? Yeah. More dry brushed yellow. I'm going to also have some burnt sienna in here. So I'm just very lightly and I'm making short executed strokes. Short, short, short. Short, short, short. Executed stroke. There we go. A little of that yellow there. It's amazing how the tree layers up. Isn't it? So cool. I'm going to add some of these coming down this little branch. A little executed stroke. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now it's nice to get a mix with less black and a lot more burnt sienna. You don't want it full burnt sienna because that's actually redder than you might think. And I'm going to brush in just a couple, like a bit of that into the bark. You know what I'm doing? Sorry. Little bit into the bark. Here we go. Little bit into the bark. Little bit into the bark. I like how the bark is coming out. Do you? I'm well, I'm so glad. But what I'm really hoping is that you guys are having like a bark bloom or a cloud bloom where you're like, oh, I see it now and I can totally do this. I hope so. Bringing this kind of a couple places. So I haven't taken out all my yellow, but now I've added that next sort of layer. And then here's the big one red, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. Sort of a half tone between the two of them and a lot of white. I'm going to come here and just on this roll. There we go. See how we're doing? All right, there. Maybe a little bit right here to the top of this one and definitely a little bit there. And for sure right here at the grass, a little bit of this. Okay, we're done. So we're creating that super duper highlight. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now, one thing that you can do while you're here, it's sort of interesting, is you can grab a little of your white. And you can come down this little tree branch. And look what I'm doing. I'm going to tap out some snow. You guys see the snow I'm tapping out? Yeah. Tap out that little bit of snow. You never know where you're going to go. So we're just tapping out a little bit of snow. Well, it's like teaching a person how to paint a tree in every season, isn't it? <laughs> so now that branch has the snow on it already. We're not even going to have to struggle for that, right? And we've got everything here so we can put in our grass. I'm going to sippy sip my coffee. And I'm going to shape in some of my tree, which is a fun, fun time. And then we'll put in some grass and shape some more tree and put in some grass and then we'll be done and it will be fun and you will have learned about the seasons. I'm going to use my chalk though to help me. Remember that my tree has to be quite uneven. I need to leave blue some places, right? I'm going to come here and I'm going to like make sure I've got some, some little blue there. Like you might have, maybe there's some that comes down here. It'll fall. It falls this way. Let's make a little fall, fall that way. The fall can fall this way. Yeah, I'll leave a little corner blue there. But this I'll probably actually take all the way down. 
up here, it's, it is definitely from the top. And I'm going to wiggle this back and forth in a little bit from where I expect the tree to go. Because as I paint it, it's interesting. I will find different places that I feel like I've got to have the leaves. I am making uneven edges, edges that have had different amounts of rainfall, different amounts of growth. Over here, we've got the spring. This is based on the um, golden trees in Thailand, the yellow part of this. And then we've got the new green spring that I saw in France. And we have this bright red that I saw when we were in Kansas. And then we have the, the winter, the dead winter that I saw in Colorado. So I got a lot of stuff represented here from my life. Now here on the fall side, what I'll say is that you definitely, definitely want to keep a lot of open space because you're losing leaves, you know, to the season. So that's an important thing to do. And it's also important to make sure that you have some of the, the branches have some leaves and some of them don't. So that you can be like, oh, there's some leaves falling this way. And so what I'm doing is I'm just giving myself this chalk reminder of where I might want to put focal interest points that I would like so I can start painting that in. Now I'm going to put out my cad yellow and also a little bit of cad red where well, let's see what we can see on the palette here. I can take that down there too. Yeah I got this weird palette. I, I, I kind of take it up and down and move it around. Actually it, it just it's been kind of moving around. Yeah I think the best spot I have is like kind of over here. And put it over there. Uh, I have my small pa palette today, and I like my bigger one for the show. I gotta go find the bigger one that I put away so cleverly. I cannot find it. I love being so clever huh. that I trick myself. How are you guys doing? Let's see. Oh my goodness, five thousand eight hundred eighty-three. It's going really crazy. Okay, so so far because we reached the three thousand benchmark, John's got to do an ATC video, and then I because we reached five thousand, I'm gonna paint a Bob Ross painting in oils, following his tutorial, his kit, his stuff. At eight thousand, I am showing my my drawings from childhood and college and all my early work, and then if we get all the way to ten, which would be just such a blessing, um, uh, we're gonna show our wedding video. I can't things. wait. That's the one I'm most excited about, to be honest. Showing wedding, all our wedding you, stuff? You, back in the day. So, way back in the day. I Way back in the day was cute? What? You're, you're still cute. <laughs> so, way back in the day, I was, uh, Cinnamon was going to school for for her arts and, and at the Art Institute. And she edited. And Prairie View A&M. Yeah, and you edited. I did do both because Prairie View didn't really have. We were still, like, cutting letters out. Yeah. And pasting the like, Non photo blue, so I needed some computer class. Well, you wanted to go down and get um photo. You wanted to get a lot of the editing, editing, some computer editing, yeah. Photoshop. I needed those classes, and it just wasn't really available. So before before even I was doing editing stuff, she went down and took Premiere at Art Institute and edited our um home our um our wedding video and made a very strange claymation. And you did that was the weirdest claymation. I don't know where that, that she would is, only make in your youth. Yeah, such a and yeah, did the wedding video. The wedding video. So we're going to share that hopefully. With the Nina Simone. I, like, it's going to be content ID thing because it's got Nina Simone on the side. We can, we can, we can reach it. I don't think we should. I, I intended it a certain way artistically, and I think we should keep it. So <laughs> we'll, we'll put it on a blacklist channel where we knew it. <laughs> I'm going to get my number eight bright again. I'm going to get into my cleaner water. I think my water is getting a little bit dirty. And I do an interesting thing. The first part of my yellow tree, I'm actually going to take a little bit of this red here. And I'm going to make, I want a yellow, but I want a yellow that has a slight orange cast to it. So hopefully you guys can see this slight orange cast. Because I've got to talk about a couple ranges of the yellow. One of them is slightly green, and one of them has this slightly orange undercast. That's not slightly. That's a lot. But you do need that. This is the slightly orange. So you can build up the layers of yellow really easily. So how am I going to get this tree in? is I like to take, this is the number eight Cambridge, I'm going to come on the corner of the brush, I'm going to be wiggling. You're, you're going to see, oh yeah, I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. I'm going to dance around and wiggle my brush. Look at that, look at me wiggling. But look what happens when I do this. When I do this little wiggle push, I get these incredible little edges, don't I? Yeah. You need edges. 
Not like in your hair. I don't mean like good edges in your hair. I mean like good edges in your painting. So it's, it's good to have good edges. I don't have good edges. But uh, I never did. Come right over. Oh, that's right. Do you have a one you can show? Oh, no. It's There's a link. You guys should go check it out. It's a 16 by 20. I spent like a gazillion hours on it, and it's amazing. Okay. So I'm going to brush the yellow into here a bit, even though I know I'm going to come back with some green. There's going to be some, some weird co-blending. And I'm going to be bringing the spring part of this tree, this, this little golden waterfall tree. Uh, sometimes it's called a golden shower tree, but in the U.S. that has a second connotation. Um, it's oh, funny, <laughs> but, but I, you know, golden waterfall, gold, you know, these are these beautiful jewel. They're on, they look a little like wisteria and they just have cascading, uh, blossoms and things. There we go. Is that good? There we go. We're just, we're just starting to talk about this. This is the first layer of this, right? That we're talking about. Then we got to go green, right? We got to go green as we're coming around doing our tree. Every time I do these, different. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I could not be a paint forger. It would not work out for me. So initially, I'm going to take a little of my green and some of my brown together. And I've got some deep color into the tree right about here. I can bring this down just a smidge, even though I'm going to come in with some light green in a bit. But we want to have some deep color to build up on. Build up on your deep color. Not too much past the middle and not too far up into the tree. I wouldn't take it out past this much, but it will make a big difference in how your tree builds out because this would be the most shadowed part of that tree, right? So that's what we got going on. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to get some of our yellow. And I'm going to make a lighter green. And I'm going to be just on the corner of my brush here, just kind of brushing out some zones. Talk about this a little bit. Say, oh, no, there's, a, there's some stuff. The trick with the trees, guys, is to make sure you don't take out the values in the shadow. Look at that. Wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. Wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. Now I can bring some of that green into that. Yellow zone, see? See, see, Bugsy Seagulls come to teach a painting lesson. I'm going to wiggle this way. I'm going to wiggle that way. You can wiggle. I can wiggle. We can all wiggle the brush. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. I'm wiggling it. I'm wiggling it. And as I'm coming out, I am lightening the pressure, and I'm letting it sort of open up and show the canvas, because I'm going to be coming back with some very light uh, colors up in here. And to do that, I'm going to definitely need to leave room for it. Maybe there's a little bit of blue peeking through. It's okay to leave little holes sometimes in your trees for the birds to fly through. Now, it's interesting. I'm going to make this very, very light green with lots and lots of yellow, but I'm going to take some of it and I'm going to add a little of my cad red to it. See how I'm doing that? Yeah, uh, okay. And this is going to be where this tree and my fall tree transition into each other. If you were trying to paint a tree that was transitioning from its summer leaves to its fall leaves, you would see some of these half-tone leaves. So not only are you learning how to paint this stunning four-season tree, you're learning a lot about what makes a tree look like itself across several different seasons, aren't you? There we go. So this little zone is actually pretty important because it will make what you are doing much more believable. And don't you want to be believable? I'm just adding a little more of the red so that I can 
wiggle and tap this in here and you can see it's just all these little subtle bits of things, isn't it? Rinse out. One more color I have to put out. I need the bigger palette. Finding it for tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow is a much chiller, shorter painting. Um, but I still think, I think this one is super worth doing. I'm going to add the purple over here. I'm going to do the first part of my fall tree in my purple and cad red. That's going to be my deep value. Um, I really like that for my fall tree. So I'm going to grab some of my red and some of my purple right here. Do, do, do. See how I always leave some pure pigment on my palette? That way I always have room. Room, room, room. Get my dark values on. All right, I think I got it there. So there this is. This is that nice mix of probably like two parts dioxazine purple, dioxazine purple to one part cad red medium. And I'm going to just start to wiggle the brush. Wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle the brush. And I'll be light in here as this comes into this part of the tree, right? Like you would. Just woo -doo -doo. It's going to blend out, doesn't it? Isn't that just stunning? Like little randomizings. Random. Oh, I love this. I'm having so much fun. I'm sorry, guys. I am. I'm going to bring this down up over this branch. Oh, I do too. Like, I didn't even mind the studies of it at all. So I was like, it's just so fun to paint. Little guy there. There's a little bit of them out there. So every time you're doing this, because you've got to leave room for bare branches because we're coming up into fall, the tree is dropping its leaves. It's interesting to do this. I hope you guys are having fun doing this. And I, as I get to the end of this tree, then I can get to take a little break. And you get to take a little break and breather, and we get to do deep breath and congratulate ourselves. And I'll see you next week. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys get the rest. You can do the rest, right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a mic off. You get so the gist. No, I'm just. Do you want to? We no, need to. Oh, <laughs> I was just kidding. That would be so mean. The meanest thing we ever did on the show. Yeah, and then never actually teach it again and be like, no, no, that was like, yeah, it is April Fools, but no. For, for artistic integrity, we'll never teach it again. <laughs> I'm sure I'll break myself before the practical joke does. All right. So I'm going to bring some leaves down forward, 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 up over kind of this little space because I think that will look nice to have a little bit of that right here. You might want and a little bit of that. Like there, but it can't go too far because we got we don't want to get into winter, right? We don't want to get into winter, and so now I have that there. It's pretty nice, pretty happy with it. I might this time carry a little bit of this back into the trunk this direction, like we can. That was fun. I just sometimes do different things. I see it, and I go, "Ooh, you could go there." And the tree says, really, am I going there? And I say, oh, you totally are. It's going to be great. And the tree's like, okay, if you say so. I'm going to clean up some of my chalk where I was like, your mic broke? There it goes. Did okay. my mic break? No, just Have mine. I been talking to anybody? No, you've been, my, uh, my mic, for whatever reason, just uh, cut out. Is it cut out forever? No, or it, I fixed it. Oh, okay. It was, there's a micro switch in it. And for whatever reason, the micro switch didn't. So, I mean, so hopefully so far, what you should be having is like this sort of very crazy edge little tree. You're seeing those crazy little leafy edges inside. You've got this very traditional yet twisting, gnarling trunk that's happening. And you know, you can lighten it. You can darken it. You can you could make it peeling bark. You could really you could do it birch. It's just, there's no limit. This is your tree. You can plant any tree to show all your seasons. Not really a pine because they're deciduous, but <laughs> you're an artist, so you could just be like, no, now it has fall leaves. Take it. I'm an artist. Yeah. These are the things I do with my paint that you cannot stop me, world. My tree. Might be able to take my parking spot, but you can't take my deciduous fall tree. 
<laughs> they like the tree. I like the tree. I like the tree. Oh, I really wanted to do this. It was a big one. Like, everybody was doing elephants uh, for St. Jude, which is like a very important symbol. Um, but I, the hallway, that mm. was what, like, boom. That didn't throw kindness around like it's confetti. And I will do something about that later in the art. Oh, world. yeah, real quick. Um, I'm going to miss my paint because it's and I will hot. Show you. Can you tell it's hot? I'm melting. You, you have to step to your left two, two seconds. My left. <laughs> <laughs> my left, I have to think about it. So that's it in regular light. It has a black light feature, too, where it's all a glow. We did in black light paint. That's a, that, that is Azure Wing Repose, the painting Cinnamon did last year for St. Jude that is up for auction this year. 16 by 20. 16 by 20. 16 by 20. So. I don't know how many more days it has left. It has some days. And all of that, like, like just like it's going to deduct the shipping and then all the rest just goes to. And it's far and everything is ready to go. Ready to go. Ready to go, which for us, if you've done anything with us, you know is a big deal. <laughs> <sighs> all right i'm gonna put a little of my my kind of grass and thing down here to start i'm gonna get a little of my green and some of my yellow because this is my spring grass so it'll be a little more yellow than my summer grass but i still need to have um depth and everything to it and i'm gonna take this brush and i'm gonna just using these rough bristles i'm gonna Make these sort of uneven little lines. Can you guys see them? Yeah. And then you can come up a little bit. And then you can come Surprise down. Surprise grasses. Yeah. I don't know why I'm seeing some weird old western from my brain. That's so strange. Hmm. Blazing Weird Saddles? Old, I don't know what it was, man, but I'm telling you, some <gasps> Western that I watched as a kid, some spaghetti or something that got stuck in there and apparently just came out now. But see how we're making that kind of like uneven soft edge? And then as I'm coming through for summer, I'm going to deepen my grass into my just my good thalo. Ooh, there's only 20 hours left on the auction. Only 20 hours? 20 Ooh. hours like so tomorrow. Okay, so it's over tomorrow. So I guess whoever gets it gets it. Yes. But That's yeah, how we may be work. slow, but we keep our work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll say about it. We're slow right now. We're getting but, better. We're yeah, getting we're better getting processes better. in place. But we do keep our work. Oh yeah. Yeah. It it's a we're not necessarily the most organized group of artists. <laughs> but when we no. do show up <laughs> we we do show. John and I were talking about this. Like, like we're never late because we're like pretentious and we think our time is important. We're just late because, like, like right before this show, I dropped a pack of canvases on my foot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so she comes in and she's like, "We're early. We're fine. We'll, we'll just finally like we did all our prep. We followed the sheet. We got on like woohoo, ten minutes. We're having coffee. We're laughing. Drop some canvases on your foot, and then you're." Ten Kids came late. running in to see what mom was hooping about. And yes. they're like, what'd you do, dad? <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <laughs> you just blame him for everything. <laughs> it's like, watch uh, your mom drop a box of canvases. <laughs> 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 and they're like, oh, mom. Yeah, no, that's like, so that's what, stuff like that happens to us. The signal goes out, yeah. sitting leaves, just things. I'm adding brown to this mix as I'm coming over because over on this side, we're going to be into the dry grass. I changed also how I did the dandelions, I think, to a better way. I think I, I worked out a better dandelion. I'm just making sure these are all blended between each other. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to now add some yellow and some burnt sienna to my brush, but I haven't washed off the green. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Look. Dry grass. grass. Look, the grasses have dried. What does that mean? That means, well, that they, they add a water. Now, over here on the side with the snow, it's sort of interesting because I've got to darken that, actually, to create that. And I like to have a little shadow from where these are to that. So I'm going to go right into my black and my Prussian. And this is going to be like right here in a minute. Make that. See how I wiggled that uneven edge?
That is the basis of my snow. There you go. The basis for snow. Got some. I have all that. I'm going to rinse this brush out so well. So, so well. You're going to love it. <laughs> so the next little micro mix in the yellow is I'm going to get a very light yellow green. It needs to be more yellow than green, but we need to see a slight green to it. You guys see that? Yeah. And I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. I'm going to just kind of add some of that to right here. All right. Maybe we even take a little bit over this. A little. And I'm going to add some of that, like, between these two zones. Just, so it's really wonderful. You add these little casts that it feels like the leaves are turning into their other spaces. I'm going to get right back into my yellow mix. Yellow, 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 yellow. Maybe a smidge, a smidge of white. I'm going to come to the ends here. Not all the way to the ends, but I'm going to start bringing this yellow into some spaces. Come up and add a little bit of that there. Let's follow a little line. I'm coming back. I go up. I come down. And this creating a highlight, even within the tree, starts to tell us where the light is hitting these leaves. Yeah. And that's why the orange becomes so important because... When you're painting something that's yellow on yellow, that can be really challenging. I don't know if you guys have ever had to do that. I get questions about it, so I'm thinking so, which is like when it's a monochromatic space like this, you know, where it's predominantly yellow, how do I show form? How do I have highlights? How do I have these things? Put that out there. You know, I'm just making sure I'm put maybe a little bit of this on that little green area. A little. See how we're doing? A little more of the yellow. Make some, like, bright pops, right, into the tree. A couple places. Not everywhere. For goodness sake, don't do it everywhere. It'll make no sense. But at that point, you should have, like, See how that, boom, four from the distance. But here's the, here's the big money trick. I'm going to kind of wipe off my brush a bit so I don't have so much yellow pigment in on it. And I'm going to get my white and some yellow. And I'm going to make a very bright light yellow. Can you see that baby ducky yellow I've made here? Baby ducky yellow. At the edge of the branches. Pop out some baby ducky yellow. Baby ducky yellow is a fun thing to do. Oh, this little branch has some baby ducky yellow. And now you know why you need to get your clouds in. Because <laughs> your tree grows. My tree grows in my painting. I can tell you that right now. Every time I do a tree, it's like, it's growing on me. It's like, oh, the tree's growing again. But I love these little outside edges. Can you guys see these little outside little bits? Totally. This is the pop. This is a zzz, 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 zzz. You can have a little bit of this in here, but you got to be kind of reserved with it because that would be like maybe like an outer branch that's foreshortened or, or something where a little bit of something got a little extra light. And here, let's see how that looks. Oh, that's got a lot going on now, I doesn't like it? I like it. I like it too. I'm going to get a little more yellow on my brush. More yellow on my brush. I'll grab some of my green over here a little bit. That green. Well, oh, that's nice. That's a good green. Let's get this green. I like that green. Let's start talking about our tree. Wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. Wiggle, 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 wiggle the brush. My summer tree is so green. My summer tree is so green. I know I sing terrible songs. I, oh, I think it's a great song. <laughs> just, I mean, it's okay. Like, I'll get, like, these, uh, I, you know, like, most of you guys, I think, sing along with me. But every once in a while, somebody, like, points out that Idol is not my future. And I'm like, you so right. You know. Here's a really good singing channel. You should everybody, check else out. Here, everybody out here just said they like your, your singing. You guys are so nice. Like, like. Everybody. I didn't, I, I didn't take a poll of all 400 and whatever, 50, 
60, whatever. I don't know. I've looked. There's over, four, there's like almost 500 people here. Oh, thank you guys for showing up for this painting. I was worried it would get a following because it's kind of, you know, oh, an unusual idea. I didn't know if anybody else would be excited about a four season tree. I'm darkening up my green a little bit as I'm going. Yeah. You guys see how I darkened up my green? I do. I need to darken it up again. Your green needs to go darker and work through. Green. Green, 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 green. It's a summer green, but it still needs to be like a green. So as I'm moving back into the tree, those greens need to not be as bright. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got to be like, super careful about what you've got going on here because nothing, nothing bad will happen if you mess up. Because huh. <laughs> there's no, like, seriously. <laughs> Even if it all goes wrong and you're painting something you should know, it's not going to explode. No. No. Doesn't it shouldn't. That. You should really see somebody. <laughs> it. <laughs> it should not explode. Now, sometimes when you're dry brushing, your brush starts to dry and you've literally got to wash it out. You may not know that. So I've got some pretty good uh, little areas here that are happening. And I'm going to come and really get some light green. I'm going to use my yellow, my green, make this super light green. I might even this time also add some whites, really light, but not too much because if you get too much, it's going to be like a mint. But I just want to show some of this. Hopefully it's the, there we go. I'm just going to show some of these little lighter heart. Can you see these little light heart edges where I tap it out? Isn't that yeah. cool? Have you ever done that in your trees before? Just tap them out. And you're wiggling and tapping, wiggling and tapping. Look at me, random, 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 random. I'm here, I'm there, I'm like spinning, I'm like, woo! <laughs> you're like, you're not off-roading or on a roller coaster. Why are you so excited? I like it. So you're, you're climbing a tree with your brush. I'm, I'm, I'm living in the tree. I'm being the tree with my brush. This is what I love. I'm being the tree with my brush. Is that kind of like being the ball? It is like being the ball, but it's more awesome. Because I can't throw a ball or work with it. So. Be the ball. Oh, Just make a little man. highlight in here maybe. And a couple of spots. You don't need to get too much of it. Because, you know, the light is usually at the outside edges. But hopefully, like, once you've got that, then that has started to get some, like, real, some real form, right? Yeah. You can even, yep, that's too yellow. What? You're very. There we go. But it's okay. So, look how I blend it in. Doesn't even matter. Does it? Even if you get, like, something that's, like, out of hand on your stuff, you just go, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll just tap you in, man. It's all good. There. All right. So we're there, and we've got that, and that's looking pretty darn good. The fall is my favorite. It is my very, very, very favorite. I don't know what your favorite is, but fall is my favorite. And I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone and my CAD together, interestingly enough, unexpected mix that you're going to see over in the other flowers. You can get a smidge of the purple for this first kind of little layer that you've got going, but you definitely want it to be way brighter than what you had initially put out. And start talking about this. I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle my brush. And see how I just leave those shadows? Like the shadow leaves. Weirdest league. It's a really weird thing. <laughs> like, I don't even get membership there. I'm so confused by it. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. Why doesn't everybody just leave? That's like the, uh, like, I follow you blindly, but you're totally going to kill me, club. I'm very confused. I would not be an ideal member. I'd be like, oh, I think everybody should just paint. Because I don't think this makes any sense to anybody. <laughs> League of Shadows, that's what it is. It's just, what? One, we see you all the time, so that's not working. And then two, you like, totally are not, like, Hydra and the League of Shadows, I'm completely confused by what the messaging is to get membership. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know what, like, that's the show I want. It's like, how does... How does Hydra get anybody to join? <laughs> you know, that, that 
they've got to have a really good recruitment team. I mean, it's like, come to the dark side, there's cookies. And good on uniforms. The Death Star. I mean, they do have good uniforms. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Just a weird recruiting thing. Just avoid that guy, Darth. Yeah. Just, what's the recruitment? It, like, like. Nobody looks like happier. Dude, like that was probably the best scene I've ever seen in any Star Wars movie where the two star trooper or the, the, the two shock troopers were coming around the corner and uh uh what's his name was having a fit in the room bang and uh, they just turned around and they noped out of it. I love that. They were That's just, real. That was totally like <laughs> the most real moment I've ever seen on the Death Star where they're just like, No, not doing it. <laughs> Cause you know that's totally happened at work. <laughs> I would. I'd be like, look, I just came for cookie. Look, the emperor's in a bad mood. I'm not doing it. Oh my gosh! Like, there's no way. <laughs> if you brought me in a room and said, "This is your boss," yeah, you know, they all wear the same uniform, so you know you have to wonder. It's like, you know, no, this is this is Bob. We're all clones. So <laughs> this has just got to go badly at some point for some guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loading my paintbrush up. What brush are you using? I'm here? still using the number eight Cambridge. I've mixed a little quinacridone, a tiny amount of dioxazine purple into my cat red medium. And I'm just kind of making my next values up, right? Because I'm building this up. You got to build it up. Especially the fall side. Yeah. Fall side needs, needs, you know, building up. You got to build up the Now, from here, I'm going to get some more red, and I'm going to grab, actually, a little bit of my cad yellow, which is going to lighten this whole thing quite a bit. And now, I'm going to come and start working maybe the outside edges of my fall. So, this should be, like, still in the cad range, because we're going to save that last little yellow bit for something. We won't take it too deep into the tree. We're going to just you know, pick up where, like, it should be. If you get a little more cad yellow like I have here, just tap it through. It's okay. It won't hurt you. You know, you just know, oh, this is definitely one of the lighter colors in my tree. And you can always go right into the just red itself, like I'm doing, and work it through. So you're not, you're not messed up. You are okay. And you'll notice, like, there's this lifting and tapping. Can you guys see just the random movements that I'm making? Oh, yeah. I like my, I'm wiggling it, I'm randomly tapping it. And I'm loving it. It's just so fun for me. I hope it's fun for you. It's so fun for me. And I'm making these little edges rough, and now our fall tree's starting to be so fall, isn't it? It is. It's so fall. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Now that number eight Cambridge, is it more of a, is it a bright? So this is a number eight Cambridge bright. It has a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. I put it in my Explorer pack when we first did the pack sets because I just think, look what a useful brush it is. Yeah, it really is. Right? I've got ruby satins in there. I got bristles only because I love those brushes. But look, you can find them individuals. Sometimes you can even find these on sale. You know, look around. Look at your local art uh, vendor. Right, go into your local art store. They run sales. And sometimes they can't advertise them because like if they're selling it for lower than the map, they can't huh. put it out there. So you never know what you might discover in your art store. It's true. All right. So when I have that red in, the last thing I'm gonna do is get some more of the yellow into it. For just the edges. Right? I'm going to go get some of these little edges like I did before. Here we do. Just some of it, not all of it. Like right here. See how I do? I do. I love that. Isn't that great? Just to have a little of it coming down. I think this is one of my favorite trees that I've painted. So you guys are getting the good tree. The good tree? I'm just saying it's it's like a really good tree. <laughs> it is a really good tree. 
Now, if you have nailed it and you're like super panicked, I'm just adding some more of my deep red back. Um, if you're super panicked, you know, what you need to do is realize you don't have to add the next part in if you're just feeling like there's no way I can, I can get it. Can but I'm going to show you everything that I'm going to do to get it in. Can I suggest they first stop and breathe if they're panicking? They need to breathe, breathe, breathe. Because it's not, there's nothing to panic over. It's just some paint. Okay, look at this fall trees. Look just, at that, how good that looks. Don't you know more about painting fall trees now? So now you know about painting spring, summer, and fall trees and a winter tree. Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to rinse this out for a second. And we're going to get our nice number four back because we need to do some detail work. I'm going to sip my coffee and wish that it was about 20 degrees cooler in here. <laughs> <laughs> and, your co and your coffee is about 20 degrees warmer? Yep. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to mist my palette because I want to have a lot more water. A lot more water. And I don't want to have to dip into the um, water and then back to the palette and dip into the water and then back to the palette. That's why I did this. I'm going to thin a bunch of this paint, as you can see, so I can make little branches. Little and branches. I'm going to find some spots. Oh, wrong one. And I'm going to put some branches back, like you might. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to make sure that if there's like a little bit of leaves that would be covering it, they are. And then you know what I can do? I can bring it out. Watch this. I can bring it out. It's so fun. This is a weird thing that you can do. Craig. Hi, you, Craig. Yeah, he's saying that uh, this is looking tremendous. It is tremendous. Thank you, Craig. I'm going to bring a little little dry branch here, right? We have a little, a little tiny one happening here. And again, this is going to be about getting nice little lines. And you're going to just come out of the leaves and be like, oh, wait, there's a... This could have a little branch coming at the end, couldn't it? It's a little branch peeking out. It's a, Well, that's how we're going to get some leaves to drop off that. I'll tell you that right now. Ooh. Ooh. Who has a plan? So excited. This is getting exciting. This is like getting close to that place where it's like all coming together and it's all like. This is my number four cat's tongue. And I can do this because it's got several edges, including a point. You know, use the brush that's going to give you a point. That's going to give you the result you're looking for. Just get to the point there. Just get to that point. And don't leave if you're scared. <laughs> Are you really doing this, Mr. Cootie? <laughs> hey, it's pandemonium. No, never. Yes. I likes my puns. I know you do. All right, so... You're just looking for little places that you might be able to say, hey, a, somebody, you know, escaped the tree and is out here. And Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'll squeeze a joke in here for Rachel because I owe her one. Do you owe Rachel a joke? Yeah. And, well, you know, I'm a fan of pandas and pandas are artists. I don't know if you know this. No, they're beer artists. Well, no, they also paint. Do they paint they too? Do. They specialize in portraits. <laughs> you were telling me a World of Warcraft thing, and I was like, "Oh, I you didn't walked know into that. that one. I even got you there." Yes, I love my wife. She's the best setup for my jokes. So I've got some branches that have peeked out into my little tree, don't I? My They've dad come out into that fall tree. Now I wouldn't have quite as many, maybe on the summer side, but you'd still have some. Oh, you would? Yeah, you would. The branches, right, like, and and some of it, like maybe they would be like. Covering some of your tree, and that's why I do like a little partial, or maybe you've got just a little bit of a fellow here. Now, you're using black and sienna there? I'm just using the black and sienna. Okay. And I'm making little bits of branches that could be coming out. Doing things. No, they do things. They're, 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 those, little, those little branches are climbing the tree. They're, they're making like the they tree do. grow bigger. Stretching upward. Then you wouldn't have like forever, ever, like like always, 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 everything, everything, everything. But you'd have some. And I'm just kind of letting some of these. And I can also come back with the leaves to like make things work. So 
you've got a lot of like a lot of options i just have done this a bunch of different ways and what i found was this was the easiest way to get this look oh yeah so i did it like all the different ways and then was like okay this one this one's working or at least you know the one that i found that was working i'm not saying there's not another one or i have the ultimate best one Maybe a little bit there for spring. You know, maybe there's a little fella that's, that's come right here. So I've got a little bit of that there. And guess what I get to do? I get to get right into my yellow ochre and mix a lighter color. Maybe add a little white to it. Because we don't have to make these exactly like we did the main tree that we really did the detail on. We're just trying to make sure we uh can we bark it up a little bit. Bark it up. We still have some plant some some flowers to the put flowers in. Flowers is the easy part, so that we saved that. We got flowers in the bottom, right? Yes, flowers in the bottom. We have a little spring flower, it kinda of turns into some dandelions, it turns into dry grass, it turns into snow. Oh, it's gonna be neat. It is. So see, I'm just like making sure that even coming out here on these fine little branches, they feel like the ones that we spent the long time detailing out. And even though we don't detail them out as much, they're going to give us a similar effect, which is kind of a fun thing. You can always come back if you get another color and work an area and you know, add to it for sure. You can come back with a darker color. You can come back with a lighter color. You can come back with a brown. Whatever you need to, but we're just, since these are just peeking out anyways, we just want to make sure that they have the same barkish charm <laughs> that their exposed friends do. You can see I'm just skipping along, highlighting, 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 highlighting. You can always come and offload a little bit, get a little of your burnt sienna into that mix and make sure that you've got little dabs of it here and there too. And that will help everything kind of tie in as well. You don't have to put it everywhere, just anywhere that the branch would be big enough to maybe show some of that little bark dimensionality, right? Yeah. And then it's like, it's the weirdest thing, but it's like the whole thing starts to look very, very finished. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to get my red. I'm going to load it on the tip of my brush here. Maybe my quinacridone. And I'm going to add some little leaves that have been caught into the wind. See those? Coming off the little tree. So now our fall tree literally has fall leaves. Guess what we have left to do? What's that? All the easy stuff. The flowers? Yes. I like the flowers. I They're like so the pretty. Flowers now, one thing I'm going to do there real quick is I'm going to take my Prussian blue and my white. And I'm going to come to the back end of my... and make sure that I've got some snow. I'm going to leave some room between where the snow is. See, I'm just kind of tapping and where the dry grass is going to begin. And I'm going to just, I'm almost parallel to the canvas. I'm just dropping some snow. I'm not going to add an upward dry twig. And the reason I'm not on this one is because this branch came so low. It would damage, I think, the design. 
I'm going to get a little more pure white. I'm going to highlight a little bank here. Highlight another little snow. Get a little more white. So it's about not having all pure white where we would have snow. Right here, I might put some, you know, leaving the shadow and stuff, but I want to put a little bit of that high snow coming in. You guys see the different dimensionality of the snow? It's just falling on that dry ground there. Is everything okay, babe? Ooh, yeah. Okay, you just got so quiet. I was like, uh-oh. Oh, I'm... All right, here we go. So there's our snow. Now let's come over to our spring grass because that'll be fun. I'm going to get my, again, I'm probably going to be the number four uh, almost the whole way through. I'm going to also add a detail in there. Uh, I'll do the number one archer, but you could do the three zero or the number two filbert, whichever one you have. I'm going to get my grass green. And I'm going to make it super bright because it's spring. There we go. I loaded up that uh, picture of the Azure Muse and I keep accidentally po pushing the button that makes it display. <laughs> Everyone must love it so much. Well, I love it. I'm glad we got do. a picture of it. It was so hard to, like, John did not want to let that go. But he was like, we said we would, so we will. So I'm just making some very light yellow grass. Can you see, guys see this? Uh, I've got a little yellow, so but what I do if it gets a little yellow is I just go back into the green, you know, and just blend that in, and then it's just it's just all the little colors of the grass. And then you'll be like, oh, I've got this nice little bright spot, and that's what we want is some little bright spots, some little dark spots. We get just some just pure green there and just work that in, maybe where we might have some shadows in the grass. I'm just going to paint grass. Just these little soft, full cool brush strokes. I'm just pulling it in, touching yeah. and pulling, and then sometimes I touch and pull up. Love that. I offload and get some more paint. I'm going to get my bright yellow in here. And let's uh, give ourselves some bright grass. It's just very unruly, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I love that about it. Very, 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 very unruly. And while I'm at this, I'm going to rinse this out. And I'm going to take my quinacridone and my cad red together. Quinacridone, cad red. And I'm going to add a smidge of white to that mix. And I'm going to pop a little flower right there. Pop, pop, pop. Maybe another little flower right here. Put a little dash there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I'm just That's popping really my brush cool. in. Huh? Yeah, I like it. Maybe there's a little little peak in the deep grass, right? That's maybe a little much. So I just soften it out into the green. Sue would like to know how you do your hair. How do I do my hair? How do I get my hair color? I think I think they're all. There's been a lot of people who've been st just saying how fly your hair is. They really like it. So. Okay, so how I did this one, this hair this time is, um, I always use some combo of the viral shampoo. It's a new product that comes out. You just shampoo your hair, and anywhere that your hair has been bleached at any point, it sticks to that hair. It's the hair that's been chemically treated. Ooh. It doesn't stick great to hair that's not been chemically treated. I'm not saying that my eyebrows have never taken on a tinge of pink, but it's just not deep. Um, and then I also, there's all these products by this company called Splat and it had just come out with these, um, hair colors for dark hair. And one of them was like a purple. So I had done my hair with my Splat pink shampoo. And then I just went through with rubber gloves and that product and just finger worked it through my hair. Neat. They all think your hair looks pretty flat. Thank though. you been, so much. Yeah, I know we're getting towards the end of our show here, and I'm just trying to you know let Cinnamon know because we all, she doesn't get to see the uh, uh, the chat so much. 
So not until afterwards. Now, now she can go back and see it. So she yeah, that's been kind of interesting going back and reading the chat. And yeah, as we're getting close to the end here, I don't want to forget everyone make sure you go out there and and if you can please support saint jude if you can't support them financially tweet make an announcement post them up on your on your on your social media getting attention on this organization is one of the most powerful things we can do to help their long-term survival so really really appreciate you guys letting them know uh sharing sharing anything you can about saint jude just always 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 wonderful all right, I'm adding a little highlight to some of my flowers. I think I'm going to get some yellow into it so they really pop. They pop, pop, pop. Pop, 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 because I want them to stand out against the clouds behind them. And by adding a little yellow, it will keep them from being too harmonious. And the reason I'm making a couple little tones to my flowers is so that they, it feels like they're real. These flowers have, you know, cool shadows and light shadows, and they come in different tones. And you can see I'm just tapping it out, making little little specks of color where there would be little specks. I like painting flowers. It's just a thing I have. It has that like in. Oh, that looks so pretty. Rinse, 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 And I haven't lost all my cloud work, which is like a big deal, right? Like you do these amazing clouds and then you have to paint right over it and you're like, man. Okay. So now I'm into my more summer grass. So I will still have the yellow, but it's just going to be not as much into the thalo. I'm going to get that. And I'm going to come here, and I'm going to just, using the edge of the brush, create some little tonal variations in my summer, summer grass. Summer grass growing so green. A little burnt. It's, you know, it's a richer, it's, it's ripening, isn't it? Yes. We don't think of grass as ripening, but it does. And it, it has a seed, and it, it does things. I just want to make sure that I'm showing that, that side of it, the ripening side. And that also I have, you know, deep tones, some lighter tones, things you'd expect in a summer grass. Now I can get a little more yellow into this mix. Could do a little highlight in the grass. Not as bright as what we have over in spring. And I'm doing a bigger, broader leaf. I'll get a little sparse at the center of the tree. And that's where I'll be like actually focusing my dandelions over here. And why did I bother to put in dandelions? Because I thought it was so cool. I like the dandelions. <laughs> I'm going to get just a little bit of my, better, my brighter green and make sure that these are a little merged. Because they should look like they're transitioning. You don't want to have, see how we had that transition throughout our tree? I think one of the things that happens when people are kind of painting the concept of a season tree, I'm not the first person who ever painted a concept of anything, I imagine. Hmm. <laughs> but, because um, everything's been painted in some way, talked about, thought about. Um, but it's about, when I see these works out there, I think, you know, sometimes it's very hard stops and starts between the seasons. And you want that, that transitional shifting that you can have. I'm gonna go ahead and get my dry grass over here and then I'll put my little yellow flowers in my dandelions. So my dry grass, I'm gonna get my mister, is going to be my burnt sienna and my yellow ochre and a little white. I'm gonna just Talk about the end of summer. Sometimes it'll be more brown or black. Sometimes it'll be more yellow. I'm just doing all the little dried out colors, aren't I? Now, I don't want to take this too much over where the snow is because I want to have this like little shadow. There's that snowbank line, isn't it? The environmental shadow hasn't yet come under the tree. That's like maybe the beginning of that. We've talked about environmental shadows before which is just where the environment creates an impact on the world around it. And you're, you're showing that where the light and rain don't necessarily get. I'm painting a little highlight in this dry grass. Maybe get a little more yellow into that. A 
How's that dry grass looking? I like it. As I'm coming through, I'm going to go ahead and let some green kind of get into this. So they did again, subtly transitioning, isn't it? It's turning. It's not just a switch in nature. It's a, it's a dial that moves slowly. Mm. There we go. How's that looking? I think that looks pretty good. Rinse, 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 rinse. The yellow flowers are super fun. I just am going to take, you can either tint them with the green or the red. I'm going to go ahead and tint them with the green. So I'm going to get this really bright, kind of like little green. I'm going to add a little implied dandelion. And just tapping those out. And sometimes they're like little buds. And it's nice when they're just against the green grass. They'll look really yellow, but they do have a little green tint to them. And then when you come at the, the yellow highlights that you can have, it's really going to help them pop. You could do white daisies or other uh, flowers. I just really wanted dandelions because I wanted um, to have some blowing dandelions for crazy, crazy reasons. I'm getting a very bright yellow, makes it just a little bit of white, so that I can maybe make a highlight on the tops of some of my flowers. See what I'm doing? I like it. Highlight there. I do have one. We yeah. have a few of these out here just. Just touch them around. It's fun. Always tuck a little bit of color peeking out in the grass because it would. It yeah. would just peek out. That would happen. Now, on the dandelions, I'm probably going to use my dotting tool and maybe my little white here. I had done them with, like, the little brush strokes, but I didn't think that they were quite, like, absolutely perfect. And so first I'm going to... You know, dot out maybe with this a little black kind of Prussian blue something. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we're going to put a couple dandelions there. And the little black dots are where we're going to start them. Okay, so I've got my white. And what I can do... Make a little circle of these little tat tiny dots. I just liked it better. I did these a lot of ways. You just want to make sure that it makes this little circle shape overall. Up and out, little dandelion. And if you need to put another one in, you totally can. This one I might make half. And so I'm just really lifting up and down and making like big dots, little dots. I'm just trying to make sure that this feels round. But then we're talking about these like aren't those fun? Now if you grab your littlest brush and you get just barely any of this and you can even get like Anything to tone it back, like the uh, Prussian or something, you want it to, to show but not be as much, you can come and imply maybe like one that you're sort of seeing barely. That's kind of a nice contrast when you, when you match those contrasts to that so that there's sort of this light implied area and then there's this I'll just dot with the brush too. This little guy can maybe foreshorten that. And then remember that you can make little dandelion fluffs that are flying away. Is this a bunch of details? Yes. <laughs> I see that. Sometimes it's nice to be able to talk about things, isn't it?
There we go. And they can all have little bits of the dandelion fluff just floating away like it does. You guys see the little dandelion fluffs going away? Mm-hmm. Taking us right into our seasons. That's cool. And I think that's why I decided to keep them in and they were important to me is because I thought they were good. So there's a lot about our painting that's about keeping us on the painting. And I'm really glad that you guys hung with me and did this. This is quite the thing I know. Quite the thing. But hopefully you came away, one, not only knowing how to make this, but knowing a little bit more about how certain things are maybe accomplished or could be accomplished. Wow. So this was the big, big piece that was in my heart that uh, I took from uh, St. Jude when I took the tour, was those hallways and, and how that impacted me. The studies from this month, um, if you check out our fundraiser, are uh, available at the little top benchmark of donation there. And then, of course, we have the Azure Ring. So if there's one of these, you're like, man, I would love to study for that. That's potentially there for you. Um, I think of it. Please, the hospital, for being such a crisis place, is a really joyful place. Like, they understand how much a uh, light heart is part of healing. So and it just was powerful. I just can't express to you how powerful it was. And I can say from chat, we've had multiple people in here who their lives have been saved and touched by St. Jude. So our community is directly affected by this. Our Sherpettes here are here because of St. Jude. So thank you guys for helping make this possible for us to support them like this. Supporting Derp Squad, being out there, derping it up. <laughs> derping it up. Uh, thank you for your time today. Tomorrow will be a little bit lighter. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.